If these mud brick walls could talk, what stories they'd have to tell of noisy dances and colourful times gone by. St Bathans Hall in central Otago is the oldest mud brick hall in the country and it's still looking after the local community. These buildings are treasures which speak of a past and remind us of where we come from. And if we, if we don't treat them as treasures and preserve them, then I think you're going to wipe an enormous element from your, from your heritage and your personal life as well. Oops, watch the floor. Yes, it's actually really bouncy, isn't it? <laughs> Yep. Is it an Innisfrung dance floor? No, it's not. It was, um, it's been recorded and reported that it was designed as that, but in fact it wasn't. It's just incredibly lightly built and it's sitting on rocks. Um, everything, all of the subfloor timbers are really, really uh, small in dimension um, and that's why it's bouncy. What you're looking at here is um, what we assume to be the original wallpaper. It's the only stuff that's been put over this mud and dung render. And that's what the stuff here is. That's mud and probably horse dung. And that will be what this is repaired with. But these little communities are, are full of stories and full of characters, of course. You, you said that uh, perhaps there are five or seven live here. I always thought there were 23, including the dogs, as they say. It has a fabulous history. Central, it was the great unknown for the first uh, 10 or 12 years of, of Otago's settlement. And then gold forced uh, feet inland, basically, and they, they were coming to something they had no idea about. Tell me about the history of, of this here, but also the Bendigo Goldfields as a whole. Yes, this crushing plant here was built to actually work the common time mine that was found by John Kane in 1880, about the middle of the year. They built this crushing plant and by the end of that year, December the 30th, they had produced 110 ounces of gold. But unfortunately, they took 350 tonnes of, of rock to actually achieve that which is really not economic. You know, just imagine being in here in the winter time when there's frost on the ground, everything's frozen, you pick up a bit of steel that could stick to your hands. We'd like people to be aware of what those people went through, and not only now, but 50, 100 years into the future. It's great to see that over 120 years later, effort has gone into keeping these stories in our landscape.